I noticed a lot of comments on YouTube asking about the meaning of those signals, so I will try to explain most of them step by step. First, a few words about the flight deck crew and their allocations. The uniforms of the flight deck technicians and officers hold a significance based on color. They wear colored jerseys in order to represent what job responsibilities they hold. Let's start from yellow jerseys. Those guys are catapult officers, also known as shooters, arresting gear technicians, plane directors who control taxis and movement of aircraft on deck, and aircraft handling officers. Green jerseys are catapult and arresting gear crew, air wing maintenance, quality control and ground handling personnel. White jerseys are quality assurance, squadron plane inspectors, landing signal officers, air transfer officers, safety observers and medical personnel with a red cross emblem on the back. Red jerseys are ordnance handlers responsible for arming the aircraft. They also act as a firefighting or wreckage crew in an event of catastrophic crash on board. Blue jerseys are plane handlers, chalk and chains entry-level flight deck workers, aircraft elevator operators and tractor drivers. They are basically rookies entitled to low-risk jobs, usually working under supervision of other officers. Purple jerseys are aviation fuel handlers, responsible for management and delivery of fuel. They also assist the red jerseys in salvage operations. Brown jerseys are air wing plane captains, a squadron personnel who prepare aircraft for flight, responsible for overseeing the maintenance and general well-being of their aircraft. Each aircraft is assigned to its own plane captain. They say about themselves that, in fact, they own the aircraft and the pilot just borrows it for a couple of hours. That's why a plane captain's name, rank and hometown is very often written on an aircraft's front landing gear bay door. In fact, this type of flight deck crew marking does not only apply to US Navy, but it also has been adopted by other NATO partners. So, for instance, an F-A-18 Hornet pilots can land on a French Charles de Gaulle carrier and will not be confused. Ok, so first off, engine startup and initial aircraft preparation. First, the PC commands the pilot to start the APU. He rotates his right hand clockwise and points to APU exhaust with three fingers of the left hand. The APU, auxiliary power unit, is a small gas turbine engine used to generate a source of air to power the air turbine starter for normal engine start or to provide an alternate air source for the environmental control system. Then start the engines. The PC indicates with his left hand which engine to start, in this case engine number 2, and rotates other hand in a clockwise motion. And similar thing on the port side of the aircraft, but this time the PC shows one finger indicating engine number 1. Crossing hands means switch the flaps to auto position, which brings them fully down. Now it is barely seen, but this time PC keeps his palms open from the wrist and suddenly close them, which means raise the wing flaps. This signal means that the control surfaces test is about to begin. This time the plane captain's hand represents the aircraft stick. The pilot follows his directions, moving the stick accordingly. They check the elevator movements and left and right ailerons. Palms opened mean lower the wing flaps. Now the PC raises his hands in order to check left and right rudders, which are moved by the pilot's legs. Raising hands into something like a letter Y shape means hands off the controls as the maintenance is about to approach, making final checks under the jet. The pilot confirms that by raising his hands, showing that he's not touching anything inside the cockpit. After final checks being done, the plane captain awaits the yellow shirt, and when he approaches, he passes the control of the aircraft to him, and from now on, he is in charge of the aircraft's guidance. He starts showing the wiping motion down the arm, which means remove all the tie-downs. Now the director shows the pilot that all the tie-downs have been removed, as well as the wheel chokes, which is represented by closed fists, with thumbs extended outwards. The taxi procedure on the flight deck and the hand signals from the director are pretty similar to those given by the marshallers ashore. Move ahead, turn left, 
turn right and stop. It is very important that the director does not move when signaling the pilot, as it might give a false illusion of movement. The flight deck is divided into three sections from forward to aft, named Fly 1, Fly 2 and Fly 3. Each section has its own assigned director, who is in charge of the aircraft currently transiting through his section, and when the plane leaves his section he hands off the control to another director. The aircraft is directed to an assigned catapult behind JBD, a jet blast deflector, a highly durable panel protecting the flight deck from the aircraft's jet blast. When the catapult is ready, the aircraft continues taxiing. Now the plane director gives three signals, shortly, one after another. Brakes on, extend the launch bar and unfold the wings. Now a few words about the catapult itself. It is very important to set the correct steam pressure of the catapult. Too much pressure and the front landing gear will be ripped off. Too low pressure will result in so-called soft shot, when the aircraft is unable to reach the speed required to gain a positive rate of climb, which may end like this. The person responsible for this correct catapult setup is a center deck operator sitting behind this small hatch. The steam pressure depends on aircraft's actual weight and wind speed and direction. Wind information is taken from MFCR, an electronic device displaying meteorological data and outputs from the ship's sensors. An aircraft's weight is given by the weightboard operator. Center deck operator compares those numbers according to the charts in his book, sets the output and sends required steam pressure to his headset to catapult operators below the deck. Let's go back to the aircraft. The mentioned before weightboard operator also shows his board to the pilot, or Rio, who acknowledges the number by showing thumb up. The pilot maneuvers the aircraft slowly and precisely to align the launch bar with the shuttle. This procedure is supervised by aviation boatswain mates in green shirts. When properly aligned, they give a signal to the director to lower the launch bar, and he passes the signal to the pilot. Then a hookup operator in a green shirt, who is directly under the jet, attaches the holdback, fitting to the nose gear. Holdback is a reusable bar for restraining an aircraft temporarily prior to catapult-assisted launch just like a hand of an archer holding the arrow before a shoot. He verifies if the holdback is attached properly and signals that to the rest of the launch team. The yellow shirt receives the rolling signal from the hookup operator, then signals the pilot to pull forward, which causes the tow bar to drop down in front of the shuttle. Sometimes you might notice two crew members, like in this case, one imitating the other. It's for the learning purpose and means that one of them is under instruction. If an aircraft carries ordnance, the yellow shirt will temporarily pass control to an ordnance man in a red shirt, who gives the hands-up signal to the pilot. Another ordnance petty officer runs under the jet and arms the weapon. Once arming is complete, they pass the control back to the yellow shirt. And the yellow shirt gives a signal to take tension. The pilot releases the brakes and advances the throttle, causing tension to the holdback. The aircraft bows a little and the catapult is now like a loaded gun. Then the yellow shirt passes the control to the shooter, who is responsible for the launch. He gives a run-up signal. The pilot sets military power and makes the final flight control checks. Full deflection of the ailerons and vertical and horizontal stabilizers. Two white shirts ducking on both sides of the aircraft check if everything is working properly and if so, they kneel and give a thumb up. When the pilot is ready, he salutes, presses his head to the headrest and grabs the canopy rails. The launch is pretty violent and holding the control stick might result in an uncontrolled raise of the nose after leaving the deck. 
the catapult officer responsible for integrated catapult control station, raises his hands and turns his body so everyone can see that he's not touching the launch button. The shooter carefully examines the environment and points at each crew member, looking for a thumbs up. If for some reason the launch has to be suspended, it is signaled by the appropriate crew member by crossing the arms. The shooter immediately picks that up, repeating the signal like in this case. But if everything is alright and after positive verification of all final check items, he touches the deck and points forward or gives a thumb up, signaling the launch.